What's up everyone, welcome to Sir Hunts Reviews. My name is Mark and in this video, it's not going to be very long, but I want to quickly break down who exactly is Prince Daemon Targaryen. Before we get started and before we really jump into things, do me three massive favors. As they're not really that big of a deal, but they super help out my channel. Uh, the first thing is going to be slap a like on this video. The like goal is going to be 420. <laughs> That's a weed joke. This guy's crazy. He's making weed jokes and shit in the like video. Also, make sure, if you've already slapped a like on it, that you subscribe. So that way, and this will lead into the last part, you'll get an alert if you turn on your notifications all the way. You'll get an alert every single time I drop a video throughout the wait for House of the Dragon Season 1, or as it's referred to on this channel, The Lone Knot. Now, if you can do all three of those things, and remember, that's slap a like, uh, make sure you're subscribed and then turn your notifications on. That'll greatly help out my channel. And if you enjoy my content, that's one of the best ways to help promote it so I can continue making these videos. Now, for those who are unaware, Prince Damon is the brother of King Viserys. King Viserys is being played by Caddy, Patty Constantine, and Prince Damon has been confirmed as of recently to be played by Matt Smith, who is most most commonly known as the 11th incarnation of Doctor Who. Uh, that version of Doctor Who, I'm not necessarily a massive Doctor Who fan, although I have seen the series in the past, but that version, the 11th incarnation of Doctor Who, is known to be a darker version. Matt Smith can tap into something that makes the energy in the scenes that he's in on screen uh, put off like a dark aura about him. And that's key thing that needs to be uh, realized when going into who's going to be able to play Damon the best on screen. Not necessarily who looks the most like Damon or who looks the most like a Disney porn star, but who can draw that energy that you need to to properly channel Damon. Now, for those who are unaware, Prince Damon Targaryen was a member of House Targaryen, obviously, and the uncle and later husband of Princess Rhaenyra, who has been confirmed to be played by Emma de Arcy. Now, Rhaenyra's second husband, being Prince Damon, uh, he was the younger son of Balon Targaryen and the younger brother of King Viserys I. Prince Daemon was the most experienced warrior of his time, and he actually was known to wield the Valyrian steel sword from House Targaryen in all of its history, known as Dark Sister, which was used during Aegon's conquest. And Prince Daemon, of course, is a dragon rider. Uh, he rode on Caraxes, and at one point during Daemon's time, uh, like throughout his history, he conquered what's known as the Stepstones. And the, the reason why that's important is because the Stepstones are like a bridge of the Narrow Sea. So it's south of Dorne and it kind of connects Sesos and Westeros. And, and Prince Daemon was never named Prince of Dragonstone. So he was never named next in line for the Iron Throne. So him going off on his own and sort of doing his own thing and conquering the uh, Stepstones is, and, and declaring himself king is sort of a big fuck you to his brother. But Viserys loved him so much, he didn't really take that as a sly. The only time that he sort of took personal offense is when Daemon was moving in on his daughter Rhaenyra, who was the princess of Dragonstone, and that this is when Viserys has Daemon removed from the council and sent off somewhere. So Daemon, at multiple times in his life, gets handed something because of his position, and he sort of gets bored with it and then moves on. Much like what he did with the uh, Gold Cloaks. He was the Lord Commander, and he reformed it a bunch. He actually armed the men. He gave them better weapons. He gave them a uniform. He f had it so much on fucking lock that people called him the Lord of Flea Bottom because in King's Landing, Prince Damon had his hands in the fucking crime. Like, he, his ways of torturing and getting information out of people weren't something that are that is, like... Uh, standard. It's not something that normal people with his much power do. He he was known as the Lord of Flea Bottom because he literally had his ear and his eyes on the streets. The man was the man of the people, if you will. Uh, but now some things of note about when Viserys, Prince Damon's brother, first took uh, the reins of power is that uh, Sir Kristen Cole, who's going to be another main character in this series, but has yet to been cast, and there's rumors that they're they're casting him right now. Obviously, they're casting all of the major characters of the Dance of Dragons, so they're not necessarily rumors. We're just waiting to figure out who's going to be confirmed. But Sir Kristen Cole and Prince Damon, and also Otto Hightower, who is Alicent's father, 
they don't fuck with each other at all. As a matter of fact, at the at the start of a Dance of Dragons, Sir Otto Hightower and Kristen Cole intentionally do things and make moves with Alicent, of course, in the Greens to intentionally fuck over Damon. They don't like him. The main reason being is because Damon actually fucked Alicent, took her maidenhood. He also took Rhaenyra's maidenhood, and there's a lot of other lords uh, who were sort of shit on because of certain things that Prince Damon does. So at the start of the war, it's not necessarily a, a slight against Rhaenyra and, you know, the fact that they don't think she can rule. It's also the fact that the people that Rhaenyra surrounds herself with would also be brought into power, and a lot of the people on the green side, like Alicent and mainly her father, Sir Otto, do not want this to happen. But it was noted that Sir Criston Cole twice defeated Damon at the tourney of uh, King Viserys' ascension um, in 104 AC, and then Damon served briefly as the Master of Coin after that from 103 AC to 104 AC, and then Master of Laws for six months after that, and then, of course, you know, typical with Damon's character, he grows bored of that. And his demeanor actually made him the rival to the hand of the king, Sir Otto Hightower. So their rivalry starts really early on, almost 20 years or so before the actual Dance of the Dragons begins. I guess it would be like 24, 26 years. I don't know. My math is fucked up. But 20-some years, two decades before the seeds for Otto Hightower hating Prince Damon are set in. And it's mainly because Prince Damon has this attitude of, like, I don't give a fuck. He's got the attitude of the Lan of Jamie Lannister and Tyrion in the first season. You know, um, I actually got into a bit of an argument with someone in the comment section because I mentioned that Damon will be a combination of not only Jamie and Tyrion and some of the other Lannisters, but also like Jon Snow. Um, Damon's character, we don't have any POVs from him in the Rogue Prince. It's like it's 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 there's a lot of his character that are left up. For interpretation we hear one thing about him from certain characters but then we also hear other things about him from other characters and he's sort of a conflicted person it's very similar to Jon Snow in the books everybody says Jon Snow's uh, according to the TV show this like die hard honor first all of this shit basically Ned Stark incarnate maybe a little bit of the dragon when he hangs Ollie because uh, Ollie stabbed him in the belly. Maybe a little bit of the dragon when he stabs Daenerys because he realizes... What... All of that aside, Jon Snow in the books is a different character. He's more cunning. Um, he does things like sacrifices babies. He manipulates certain people. These are characteristics that Daemon Targaryen has in The Rogue Prince and in Fire and Blood, Part 1. It's similar, yes, but I'm not saying that Damon, Prince Damon is going to be Jon Snow. No, but he will have similar aspects to the book version of Jon Snow. And one of the main reasons why I say this is because uh, the Maester is noted that, and obviously spoilers here, um, the Maester is noted, I'll, I'll try to stay away from being too specific, but there's a certain points in the Dance of Dragons where Damon is held up with a certain character, I guess... I could say that Nettles, he's held up with Nettles and something happens where he's tipped off that Rhaenyra finds out that he's laid up with Nettles and he does something that saves her life. Whereas he could handle the situation differently and like there's rumors that maybe Nettles is his daughter or the relationship is like a father-daughter type of thing. We don't really know, but there's some complexity and some mystery there and I think it's going to be further explored on screen. Uh, now, depending on exactly where they start this new series, which my sources are telling me it's going to be at the fifth year anniversary of Queen Alicent and King Viserys. If that's the case, well then, Damon is supposedly going to show up on Caraxes, and he basically kneels in front of Rhaenyra and gives her his crown of the conquest of the Stepstones and makes a joke with his brother about how if he were given any more responsibility, he would like tip over or some shit. So if that's the case and the series does really start like that, well then we'll get to see... Uh, a bit of a more cocky Damon at first, and then in the later seasons, much like Jamie and Tyrion and a lot of the other characters in Game of Thrones, they'll be softened. And at the beginning of the series, remember, we all loved the Starks, and then towards the end, we kind of hated who their characters turned into. Now, one of the most crucial things to note about Prince Damon is at the start of the Dance of Dragons, it's specifically noted that Prince Damon has more battle experience than all of his fucking foes combined. Prince Damon is literally ready for this to happen. And 
uh, sort of at the same time of Aegon II being crowned in King's Landing by Alicent, his mother, Sir Otto Hightower, it, it'll be it'll be interesting to see which way they go with Aegon II being crowned. Since he's going to be so young, obviously he'll be forced to do this situation. Like obviously Alicent's going to have a lot more control over him. But in the books, he he's sort of forced to take the crown and then grows into the role and becomes like this sadistic bastard after this crazy dragon accident where he gets horrifically maimed. But if we're going the route of having Prince Damon, like this super established battle commander, and having him know more about war and warfare than all of his other enemies combined, well then, the blacks may seem like the underdog at first, but Prince Damon, being who he is, is going to sort of just be the surprise, and I, I, I'm not sure how this first season is going to go, but I'm pretty sure it's going to start out relatively fast pace and then things will pick up quickly to go into the battles miguel sapochnik the guy who's responsible for the battle of the bastards in the greatest war sequences of all time film and tv debate me down below motherfucker uh he is a showrunner on this new series so i'm pretty sure every chance he gets he's going to try to incorporate battle sequences battle scenes skirmishes something that makes the liveliness of what made game of thrones so successful be repeated and reiterated in this spinoff series so we, since we don't have any of the main characters that everyone loved you know daenerys Arya, Jon snow none of them are going to be in this series we need to be constantly reminded that this is game of thrones this is set in that universe and there are going to be dragons titties and battles a lot in this first season but what's interesting is that damon actually uh you know he puts the crown of his grandfather jaharis the first on rhaenyra at the same time that aegon the second is being crowned in king's landing but damon actually leads the assault on harrenhal he captures a ruined castle from sir simon strong without conflict by landing caraxes on top of the king spire and after hearing about the death of his stepson lucerus at the hands of his nephew prince aemon this is when he decides to hire Blood and Cheese to murder Aegon II. But I, I'm not going to get, or sorry, murder the son of Aegon II. But I don't want to get into too much details on that. And the main reason being is because people have been commenting below. is like, since this new series is coming out, I'm not as familiar uh, with the book. So please don't just blurt out spoilers like that. So I'll try to refrain from it too much. But basically... Damon tries to start out this war the correct way by sort of being the bigger person and landing his dragon directly somewhere and taking out the one person he needs to just to sort of surrender the city without losing any casualties, very similar to what Daenerys could have done until they killed every single person close to her and murder, murder her children and gave her no fucking choice but to burn the city. Damon does something very responsible at the beginning. He, he tries to save as many people as possible, but once he finds out that his stepson and nephew was brutally murdered, well, then that's when he says, fuck it. And that's really when this war starts to get kicked off to another level. It's it's escalated. At first, there's, like, tension being built and all this stuff, and it was, like, bound to happen eventually, but Damon tried to handle things initially the correct way. And that's what I mean when I say Damon it has some of Jon Snow's character aspects. He's somewhat of an honorable person. He's gray like every single other character in Game of Thrones and every single character in the real world, in real life. No one is black or white. We're all gray down the middle. We all have our positives and our negatives, but Damon is going to be a fan-fucking-favorite and Matt Smith, I think, is an excellent casting choice. And if you all agree with me, well, then let me know down below in the comment section. And also, if you enjoy this style of content where you have to look at my ugly fucking face for 90% of the video, well, then let me know. Because these videos do take a little bit longer to make, but I enjoy making them because it makes me feel more profesh. Well, all right. I want to thank you all so, so much for watching. If you could, please do me the massive three favors as they're free. And I just want to... I want to it really helps me out. Slap a like on this video. The like goal is going to be 420. <laughs> also, make sure you're subscribed. And this is the most important part. If you've already subscribed and slapped the like, make sure you have your notifications turned all the way on. So that way you'll get an alert every single time I drop a video throughout the wait for House of the Dragon Season 1. Or as it's known on this channel, the Lone Knot. Super special shout out to every single person you see listed right here. And they're all members of my Patreon family over on patreon.com slash your hunt reviews. And if you are watching this video or are interested in joining and showing some support to me, well then check out the link down below in the description or one of the links that's popped off in this video. I want to thank you all so, so fucking much for watching. My name's Mark and this has been Sir Hunts.
reviews.